Hi, welcome to What's Up with DJ Now. Today we're making eggnog cheesecake in the Instant Pot. Okay, let's get started. Here's some of the supplies I'll be using today. We're going to start with our crumbs that we will be making our crust with for our cheesecake. And all of the ingredients will be linked in the video description as well. And please like and subscribe to this video, I would really appreciate it. And so what we're doing is we're starting with um, graham cracker crumbs that are in the box but you can also you know grind up your own graham crackers um, another thing you could use instead of graham crackers are ginger snap cookies um, for this recipe so your choice and this bowl was kind of small so I just decided to go ahead and dump it into the pan and finish mixing it in there uh, I used a little bit too small of a bowl to try and mix it up, but you can mix it right in the pan too. That works fine. I'm using a 7 inch spring form pan, also will be linked in the video description. The 7 inch will fit perfectly in a pressure cooker that's a 6 quart pressure cooker. So if you do want to do some cheesecakes, I suggest you get a nice seven inch pan. Okay, now we're just going to squish this down, bring it up to the sides a little bit and just use a spoon or a bottom of a glass or something to compact it down inside. Now we're going to set that aside and we'll get on with our batter. We're starting with two room temperature eight ounce blocks of cream cheese. You want to make sure and set out your eggs and your cream cheese at room temperature for about an hour before you do your cheesecake. And we're just going to break up this cream cheese a bit with the uh, hand mixer. And now we're going to go ahead and add two large eggs. Now we're going to go ahead and hand mix those in with the hand mixer. Try and get all that uh, semi mixed up. When you're making any cheesecake batter, you want to make sure and not over blend. So we're just blending that a little bit for now until we get some of our other ingredients in, and then we'll blend it some more. Make sure and scrape the sides down of your bowl. And next will be one half a cup of sugar. And next will be two and one half tablespoons of cornstarch. One half a teaspoon of cinnamon.
1 fourth of a teaspoon of nutmeg. Okay, now I'm going to be using real rum because I did not have rum extract, but you can use rum extract or real rum. There is a shortage right now on rum extracts in the store. So you can Google the ratio if your one of your recipes does ask for rum extract. You can always use real rum. And I used one and a half tablespoons. Okay, now we're going to do an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. Then we'll go ahead and mix this up. Scrape your sides so you can get all of it mixed in good. I was trying to do it while I was still holding on to the mixer, it was too hard. Okay, now we're going to add one half a cup of eggnog of your choice, meaning whatever brand that you want. Then you're just going to want to hand mix the eggnog in. Again, not, you know, you don't want to over mix it, you just want to get it incorporated well. Where it comes to a batter like this. Now we're going to bring back our pan and get our batter poured in there. This will fill right to the top, so like I said, a seven inch pan will make you a nice, thick, you know, cheesecake. I have other cheesecake uh, recipes and videos on my channel if you want to check them out. Uh, here's Sammy coming to check out his sample. He's quality control in our house. So he's going to make sure it stands up to the test and is good. Okay, now let's get our pot ready and our trivet. Now I'm just going to get this pan and I'm going to smack it a couple times on the tabletop. That just helps to bring up any air bubbles that might be trapped. 
and I'm going to put it on this trivet. It's a nice trivet you can get on Amazon. I'll link it in the description. It helps you lower everything in there easily. Put one and a half cups of cold water into your pot. Lower your trivet in there with your cheesecake on it. I'm going to get our lid on. Now my lid seals automatically for the model I have, which I'm showing you, but if yours doesn't, you need to make sure and seal your valve. Now we're going to come to the front, and we're going to set this for pressure cook on more and high, and we're going to set this for 29 minutes and turn off your keep warm because when it's done we don't want it to keep warm and again more and high on pressure cook it's going to beep it's going to come on it's going to come to pressure you're going to let this cook for 29 minutes and do a natural release for additional 20 minutes Okay, now we're back. Now we're going to push our release button, but there is no pressure left because it did do a natural release. Now we're going to open this slowly. Take that out, put it on the, the mat there. Now it's natural for it to have some wetness condensation on top. You're just going to take a paper towel and gently dab it to get that extra moisture off the top. We're going to let this set for two hours and then we're going to cover it and foil it and put it in the refrigerator. Okay, now I let mine go for 24 hours. This is the next day and I'm going to be opening it and getting it decorated up. And we're going to slice it up and have a taste. And again, I'm just dabbing in case there was any moisture from the fridge, but there wasn't. I'm going to use some cinnamon and kind of garnish on the top for taste and for decoration. I was having trouble with that cinnamon coming out of the sprinkle thing. I'm just using uh, the regular Ready Whip in a can. You can always make fresh uh, whipped cream if you'd like to, but I was doing the easy route, and that's what I had. So we're just going to go around the edge and kind of add some whipped cream. And then there's our finished cheesecake decorated. Nice close-ups. Smells really good. Looks quite cute, if I might say so myself. <laughs> so let's go ahead and cut a slice so we can try it out. It 
this nice firm thick cheesecake. Let's have a look up close. You can see all the specks in it of the nutmeg and the cinnamon. Mmm, so good. But I want to thank you guys for watching my video. If you'd like the video and subscribe, I would appreciate it. I'm going to link things in the description, the recipe, and some other things I used in the video. Here's some final pictures. I do have a Facebook group I'm also going to link. But at any rate, thank you for watching my video. And I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you'll try it. Thank you. You all have a great day. Bye-bye.